We're live. Welcome to the show, Michaela. How are you doing? I'm good, really bored, but so is everyone else. Um, I'm really excited to have you on the show and just talk to you about your journey in fashion photography, fashion blogging photography, and everything else you're doing right now. So we'll have people joining us in the chat who will probably want to ask questions about your journey. But before we do, you know, my first question is, you know, who is Michaela and what does she do? <laughs> awesome when did you get into doing fashion photography and how long have you been in the game you know for photography and why fashion right right Oh, okay. Um, we're uh, having some trouble. One second, um, guys. I think I don't think we can hear your audio. Just one second. Be right back. Um, yeah. Somebody just messaged me saying we can't hear your audio. So I'm just gonna quickly. Uh, just sort the audio. This happens every now and then. <laughs> yeah. I wanna do this. Yeah. Um. <laughs> okay. Just give me a second. I think. And I think we're, I think we're good. Can you just speak for a second? Um, give me just one second. It's okay. People are, people are just still jumping in. Uh, did, I might have to ask you those questions again. Okay. So if you just start speaking now. Hey. Okay. Yeah. I think we're good. Um, right, so let's start again. <laughs> Sorry about that. So, um, yeah, my first question is, uh, who is Michaela and what does she do? Yeah, so I'm Michaela and I'm a London street star fashion photographer. Awesome. So what got you into fashion and how long have you been doing it for? So I've been doing photography now for four years and it's been two years part-time and two years full-time. And the blogging industry got me into doing photography full-time, really. Because so that was my way of getting into fashion photography. Wicked. So you're a big fan of like, you know, styling and blogging as well, which I see on your feed. It kind of resembles a lot of what like influencers do, a lot of what fashion bloggers do. And you kind of like mix and match that with your photography. So that was really what drew me to like your feed because I'm not seeing anyone, spe well, not that I know, specialize in that sort of field. So it's going to be really good. So we've got um some people in the comments saying okay yeah our audio is working awesome if you have, if you guys have any questions for michaela just fire it away guys um but yeah let's jump onto the first topic then so starting your journey in fashion photography and you've been doing it for almost four years yeah, well, yeah. How, how did you start your first like journey into photography like your first you know um job or your first um project you know how did you even get to the stage where you were like Right, which camera do I need for this? And how do I find the first client and why fashion blogging? Well, um, after I graduated university, I ended up doing loads of internships. And one of them was being a host at a blogger's hangout during fashion week. And I literally just asked my boss, hey, can I take a photo um, of some of the influencers that come in, but I'll still keep on hosting. And I literally took a photo of one influencer and she was like, I literally love this shot. Can we work together? um at some point and it was like a domino effect where I shot with one influencer and she passed me around being like she's amazing work with her and so that's really how I got into influencers really yeah was that, that internship. So, so four years ago was the scene quite new in terms of like fashion blogging and like Instagram and like did you have any idea of like the potential it could be yeah no I had no idea like no one actually like even knows that influencers have photographers it's only just been brought about now but um mm -hmm. yeah so that was my niche so I think knowing having like a niche made it easier for me to grow just stand out yeah so do you yeah. think like you know like you're saying like um a lot of influencers have photographers so do you have your range of like influencers you always uh you know go to when they need like you know content posting would you say you're almost like a content creator yourself yeah, I guess I am a content creator. Like I have my regulars, so I have my weekly influences, I have my monthly influences, I have my newcomers. So 
I get quite a, a, a range of people. I even get my international influences that come from like South Africa, Australia, America. And do you travel a lot to different places to shoot influences or do they come to you? What's it like, the relationship? Yeah, so I get to do a lot of traveling. So actually I was quite lucky enough to go on four trips already this year before lockdown. Oh my God, that's so cool. Yeah, so like some I managed to have a little bit of, but um, yeah, so like I work with brands and the brands will take me to go on trips abroad and we'll shoot content out there for like websites and e-com or just the social. That's so cool. So you literally, would you say shooting a lot of content mainly for digital or do you do other stuff like magazines or studio? Like what other stuff do you might do in your fashion photography journey? Yeah, so it's mainly social at the moment. I would love to get into more magazines. I've only done like a few articles here and there, but I'd love to do like a more like campaigns, maybe one day front cover of Vogue, but you That'd know. That'd be so cool. Like, that's everyone's dream right now, isn't it? It's a dream, but you know, you got to have dreams. <laughs> yeah, awesome. So I'm going to jump into your work. Um, just before I do, uh, I'm going to quickly just sort out your audio because I think it's not going to be on this one so just give me a sec oh no I think do you want to just quickly give us some feedback on your voice yeah <laughs> yeah okay we're working right now awesome so I mean I'm looking at your Instagram socials and you've worked with a lot of um like I said you know influencers and you kind of drip in your own sort of creativity throughout it as well so kind of talk to me about like you know how does styling you know influence your photography and like you know when you're planning a shoot around influencers what's the first thing they say or is it like a joint decision or do you kind of follow their lead like what's it like so it's a bit of both so usually a brand will give them an outfit and we're going to try and find the way to make sure that outfit pops or that out like the item pops sometimes the outfits aren't that great so i always say let's do movement movement always captures people's attention yeah i love that as well yeah yeah, if I'm doing branded work, um, they usually have their own stylist. So it's more about how are we going to, if we've got a jacket, are we going to put the jacket over the shoulders? Are we going to have the jacket in the hands? So more like that. Yeah, absolutely. So you, do you do a lot of prep before you go in or is it kind of just a lot of, you know, we just kind of go with the vibe when you're doing your shoots? It's a, it's a bit of both. Some people are like really chilled. So it's like, we'll just go on the day and like see where we go. And then some people will send me um, photos of their outfits and we'll try and work out like a location that we want to shoot it in. Mm -hmm. and One so, thing yeah. I noticed about like fashion blogging photography and maybe some of the work I do is like, you know, with fashion blogging photography, would you say like you're trying to capture more like natural, like it kind of almost like that paparazzi vibe, you know, like they're kind of like walking in the street and it's like you're trying to give people a realistic feel of what it's like to wear this in the street. Yeah, because they want to make it realistic as like if we're at home and we're looking at an image, we want to buy that item. So you don't want to be too campaigny and too yeah. crazy, really nice and candid. Do you think people gel with um, this kind of like, I mean, it definitely trends a lot on Instagram. And like you were saying, like, do the influencers like love this kind of like natural photography that you do? Yeah, they do. Sometimes you, they, they want like, I guess, more posy stuff. Mm -hmm. So we'll go and get like a coffee cup and we'll pretend to drink yeah. it. But that's, that's how posy will go. <laughs> how do you like find your locations? Because obviously like you consider styling quite a lot. And then obviously like, how do you like scout your locations or like, is it a joint decision again, or do you do a bit of research on it? Yeah, again, it's a bit of both. So my dad's actually black cabbing. So what I used to do is I used to jump in this cab and I'll just be like, can we just drive around London and I'll write down like the names of the roads. So I think that's, that's pretty good. really clever. <laughs> yeah. So, and, but the thing is I'm terrible of London. So I had to make sure I write them down because I wouldn't be able to remember. <laughs> do you ever yeah. get like you know when you're shooting um do you get a lot of like interruption from like people because i find that obviously london's a lot more congested than manchester is but like what's it like for you in terms of shooting like fashion bloggers you know in the streets and do you ever have to deal with like you know stage fright or do they do or like people kind of just looking at you i feel like if you know you want to do a photo shoot you need to have some sort you really need to have that kind of Con like you're already conscious that people are going to stare at you I do obviously try and make everyone feel as comfortable as they can if there's someone staring and they're not going to be moving for a while I'll suggest should we go down to the next street until we know that it's clear I've had people film me before and I've had people come up to me and ask for a photo oh really and, yeah sometimes take a photo of my client or want us all in a photo together very strange I don't know I don't know why <laughs> Just, yeah. just want to be part of the group, don't they? Yeah, they just want to be, they want to be in the shoot, clearly. <laughs> yeah. yeah. No, so do you prefer shooting in like, you know, secluded areas or much more like landmark areas? Because you've got quite a mix, haven't you? 
Yeah, so I love a secluded area because that means our shoot is going to be like five minutes long. I know we'll be like whipping out really quickly. Whereas yeah. if we're in London, I'm going to have at least 10 people walking behind me. So it's either I wait for a bit or I just Photoshop them out. That's so cool. <laughs> I, I yeah. never thought about Photoshopping people out, but I'm guessing like when you're shooting in London, it's that busy that you might just have to. Yeah, I Photoshop a lot of people out. <laughs> So like on like, what basis would you say how frequently do you work with like, you know, uh, influencers? Like if for someone who's looking to kind of get into the same position you are and want, wants to maybe make it into a profession, what's the range of like schedule like? Are you constantly shooting? Do you shoot it all in one day? And then it's kind of like a waiting period. Like what's it like? You know, it is quite hectic. I normally do two to three shoots a day of influencers. If I do them, then that's a mix of brand work. And then I try and do shoots from Monday to Friday and then edit it on the weekends. I see, yeah. So, so it is quite a lot. And actually, I'm appreciating this lockdown time in the sense that I've actually got to work on me because of that was one thing that I was really failing to do. A bit of detoxing time for yourself. Yeah. So I'm like, but now I'm like raring to go again. I'm like, let me get out shooting. Yeah, I feel you. Yeah, definitely. I mean, it sounds like you've made it into a really like, you know, nine to five profession and like, it's definitely doable. Would you say it depends on the location you're in? Because obviously you're in London, but for people watching, like, do they need to be in like an attractive area to even have this profession? Oh no, definitely not. You could just, you just need like an influencer. So it doesn't even have to be an influencer. So you just need someone that you know wants to have photos taken and just go just go with it. Really, like remember, London rains as well. So if it rains, it kind of limits us to locations. So how do you deal with like weather when you're like you know choosing your styling and your photography locations? Like how does that impact your shoots? Because like obviously like a lot of your shoots are really nice and dry and sunny spells, but like. But like when you shoot on locations, like how do you deal with weather changes? Well, some of the images that you've just passed actually were done in the rain. Um, oh, were they? Yeah. So it's all about, you know, trying to finish up the floor, like the wet patches on the floor, making the image a bit warmer. And usually if it's locations and it's raining too much, we go under arches or into museums. I know that you have to be careful sometimes at some museums, so keep that in mind. <laughs> Yeah, have you ever like you know when you're shooting on locations? What do you what advice do you give to people like in terms of the legalities of it? Because I've definitely been chased out of rooftops before. I've been like scolded. I've <laughs> all sorts of different things. So like, are you shooting in much more like public areas that are easy to shoot in or? Well, it's a bit of both. Sometimes I thought galleries were you're allowed to shoot in them because I thought you're allowed to take pictures of the work. So. Mm -hmm. I try and like sense out who's around, and if there's a quiet room, then I'll start shooting. Yeah, definitely. I, f I can understand the galleries side of things, definitely. And you obviously have a lot of interest in colour. So like, is that something you work with the influencers or do they choose their outfits or do you have some input on that? Um, so yeah, it's like a bit of both. So sometimes they have their own outfits that they want to shoot and then sometimes they have a branded stuff. But I do love colour. I think colour really pops. So I would love to go like down the vintage vibe. But whenever I try and change my style of editing, I end up just reverting everything I've done and going back to how I usually edit. So, so how would you like describe your editing? Like, because they look really natural. But like, you know, what are your what are you actually doing to your image, and how far is it from like the original to where it uh, where it is with yours? I'm actually glad you said it looked natural. I always think when I look at it, it's like, oh, it's so it's so poppy and vibrant. No, it looks like naturally, like you know, like something that you'd, you'd see on like a good camera that's just taken it clean cut. But you know, what kind of stuff do you do in your editing? Is it minimal? Is it quite over the top? I guess it's always like you know, bring down the highlights, bring up the shadows, put a bit of clarity on, but not too mm -hmm. much, and changing all like the colors and the saturation, the luminance, like change all the tones. So I guess I do do a lot. Yeah, definitely, yeah. and. I think like you've given a lot of tips there for styling as well. So like, would you say, you know, you think about styling a lot when you're doing these shoots? Have you ever planned a shoot and where you've gotten the chance to like, just choose the whole outfits and where do you start with that? Like, do you usually work with a stylist or do you sometimes get the outfits for the influencers? So usually it's the influencers that I just do all that. I do want to do my own personal shoots. I, I, I actually stopped doing my own personal shoots whilst working like normally because I had no time so I love to bring on stylists makeup artists and a model because I have obviously no, I know loads of models and just mm -hmm. do something so I kind of miss creating more personal projects myself yeah but, I mean definitely do get your like personal projects on the feed as well yeah so I want to bring that out more so hopefully after lockdown I'll I'll go and shoot these ideas that I have in my head <laughs> 
Yeah, to see, even though you've got like, such a hectic schedule, do you think like you're going to have time to do some passion projects and how do you actually get them scheduled in? Because you're always shooting pretty much every day, aren't you? Yeah, so I guess we're just going to have to arrange a time to be like, right, Michaela, you need to do you now. Like at the moment, I'm doing FaceTime photo shoots, so... Yeah, I mean, what's your opinion on that right now? Because a lot, you know, I think it's so trendy for like a lot of people. Like, it works really well, especially when you take pictures like this. I like when you frame it with yeah. like props and everything like that i think that's such a genius way of like bringing more depth to it yeah it means you get to use your camera but i would highly recommend doing face on photo shoots one they're fun and now i'm charging for them so you yeah know, yeah still trying to build my brand here yeah so. and is that again with like influencers and other people like models yeah and if you don't know anyone you can reach out to a modeling agency and be like hey i want to photograph some of your new faces mm -hmm. and do it over facetime and i'm sure they'll say yes because i've seen a lot of people do it do you often work with a lot of modeling agencies as well because you've got good connections but do you think that's a good idea as well to like get in touch with modeling agencies yeah so that's if you want to do personal products definitely um agencies would be the great way because then you get a list of different faces that may work for your um project that you want but that's, yeah, that's actually a really good idea you. no yeah. it looks really good like the it's actually really like high quality i mean yeah, if you've got yeah. if you've got a good camera and like good phone like you kind of sort it aren't you yeah so some does depend obviously on the internet connection so me and oh, jess yeah. screen at the moment we only have an iphone 8 no new mm -hmm. fancy ones hey, that's that, all i've got yeah and you see like that's the type of quality you can get with an iphone 8 so that's you not bad to... that's pretty good quality you know yeah that's so cool well, i'm glad like you've got a lot of input on like you know so much input on like styling and like you're finding new ways to adapt and just doing you know something to build your brand image and everything else so i guess my next question was like you talked about you know university and becoming a photographer now you're like pretty much you know do it as a profession like nine to five and you've got the weekend to work on your own passion project so i get a lot of questions from like uni students is it worth it? Uh, how did it help you when you graduated uni? Okay, so I did art and history of art at university. So I'm actually self-taught in photography because of I did fine art and photography wasn't fine art enough. So what I took away from university was more connections with other peers that can help me in the industry. So I wouldn't regret going to university. I had a blast and it gave me discipline and it focused me more. But I guess for photography, it wasn't as useful. Do you think in this day and age, people need a degree to go and do photography? And like, what? why would you go to uni? And what would be the justification for photography? If you can do it self-taught. Yeah, well, I guess it's more about making connections because of if someone in your course had like a connection with, I guess, Ralph Lauren, your mm -hmm. memo pass on to you but I guess you don't really need it in my opinion because of I managed to get here without needing a, a photography degree yeah definitely so do you think um for people currently doing university it's a great one just for networking especially because you, you've got like stylists in the same department you've got makeup artists you've got all these different things that you can make projects with yeah, so you can do that. And I'm sure in photography, they teach you how to use studios, like studio lights, which is something that I've obviously never been taught. So mm -hmm. I had to do it self-taught. And I think that'd be way easier for me to yeah. learn. Edit, like and I guess for people who don't have like a, a lot of money, they can still loan out high-end equipment and like lenses and all this kind of stuff. So yeah. for someone who is doing photography at uni, what advice would you give them right now in terms of, you know, like before they finish their final year, how can they set themselves up to then go into a career in photography? I guess know what type of photography you want to get into. Like, are you going to do landscape? Are you can do portrait, fashion, food? And then you start researching the photographers, their style, and then go on Instagram and find photographers that are like you and try and build your for like portfolio like that. Yeah, that's a really good idea. Like, shoot like the people you want to work for, basically. Yeah. Awesome. The and then eventually just keep networking. Yeah, networking is still, like really key. Like most of my jobs I get from Instagram, like 90% of them. Yeah, pretty much same. Would you say like that is a new outlet if anyone specifically wants to do fashion-based work as well? Yeah, definitely. Like I got, that's how brands reach out to me is through Instagram. Well, so that leads us on to the next question quite nicely. Like how did you actually establish your clients for freelance then? And like, you know, talk about brands and uh, influencers. Was that main, is, you know, when you first left, 
university is a combination of networking but you would you say like instagram and social media is the main thing that gets you your clients yes definitely i feel like social media is a portfolio so although i have a website i feel like instagram's constantly been updated and people are seeing my posts seeing what work i'm doing and people reach out to me from there like i get a dm i'm getting dms still like going out to shoot even when Boris didn't say that announcement yesterday. I'm still not going to, but... Um, <laughs> we, we could talk about that later, actually, because obviously a lot of people have differing opinions on that kind of stuff. But definitely for someone who's, you know, um, left university or now they're at the beginning of their journey, what advice would you give them for establishing clients over through Instagram? Because some people might just go under the radar and not get any responses. Like, what is the best way that you can, like, reach and get attention? Um, well, I guess find out who works for the brands. So if there's like a PR agency, find out who works in that PR agency. And so just like in their posts, trying to like build a friendship with them and then they'll contact you and ask you if you're available to shoot. So I work with a few brands and I, that how I got to know the brands was by finding the individual people who work for the brands if that makes sense. <laughs> yeah, finding the right people who are like running the marketing side of it, the PR side of it, and this, that's the people you really want to get in touch with. Yeah, because a brand will have like, what, t- 2 million followers, but and the people- Thousands who- of messages in the yeah. inbox I just can't read at once. Yeah, and the people that people that work for the brand will probably have like 200 followers. Yeah, and yeah. You'll easily, like, you'll stick out more. Yeah, either like an email to the right person or a DM to the right person. It would just be a lot easier. So that's a pretty good advice, actually. um is there anything else would you say that has helped you like establish your clients like do you go to like networking events at all or do you like use anything else that has built your client base up quite well when i first started i went to events um i'm trying to remember the website i use actually eventbrite that's how i found some events you can Uh, check it out i mean oh i think i know what you're talking about eventbrite um yeah yeah, hang on because that that has quite a lot of different stuff on it doesn't it yeah that's like the where one. you can you can search in what you want to do and then you can meet up with like-minded people yeah so i went on there and i probably typed in fashion photography fashion parties and i went to like a magazine mixer and so that's right. how i got for a magazine like an article once so yeah i probably should go back to that really <laughs> yeah i mean providing events are still gonna happen but to be honest oh, yeah. like i i did remember seeing that there were like a lot of regional networking events going on and I'm sure there's like similar websites for people in different areas but this is a great one I think that you just mentioned yeah so that I like definitely recommend it would you say like you've got to be like a people's person as well at these networking events like are you quite like chatty or like do you go straight in for the kill and try and find the right people and give business cards out like what's your like strategy oh okay so Oh, yeah, I do get a bit awkward, but you do have to be chatty. You're selling yourself. It's like an interview, basically. So you have to be like, hey, what do you do? I do this. How can we, like, connect? Yeah, definitely. Um, do you think it's worthwhile having, like, um, business cards and websites up and things like that? Does that help you out in any way? Um, definitely having a website. I, I do want to make business cards again because I feel like you should, everyone should have a business card. It's not needed because of as much because you have Instagram but I would always just recommend having a business card yeah definitely and how many times would you say like have you actually given someone your website like which is more important now like is it Instagram or is it websites or is it both like you know what's what's the most important thing I would say they work hand in hand so if um, a brand finds me on Instagram they want to check my work out through my website so I would say do a bit of both. I do need to update my website. So these photos are super old. <laughs> I mean, this, the fact that you still have a website is good though. Like that's definitely like the right step in the right direction, isn't it? Yeah. So that's one of my lockdown um, things to do is to update my website. Yeah, I literally do the same thing. I had like an outdated Wix website and I changed it to like a new, new place and it was just so much better. Yeah, you see. So definitely. I need my new website. <laughs> that's so cool to hear. Well, I think you've given a lot of like direction on how you've established your clients. Um, but you say you, you know, you you're also kind of like venturing into other social media platforms to build your brand image during lockdown. And you've got yourself like a YouTube channel, and you said you're also working on TikTok um, content now. Like, how's that been for you? We could actually check it out now, actually. So, like, what kind of stuff are you doing to, you know, on your channel and just talk people through it? Like, 
is it worthwhile building a YouTube channel? Yeah, I think so. Like I started YouTube two years ago and I gave up. I just didn't have enough time and I lost confidence in myself. So I decided that this year I was going to do YouTube and then lockdown happened and they've like forced me to do it more. So my, like my YouTube is all about photography, fashion and photography or my trips with brands or influencers abroad. So it's really a semi part of my life and giving you tips and tricks on how That's I got here. So cool actually. So if anybody wants any more details on that, check your YouTube channel out. Um, would you say like, it's a great source for people who want to like even earn some passive income, like in the long term? Yeah. So, okay. I did not know this, but I thought as soon as you hit like a thousand uh, subscribers, you would get money. <laughs> so yeah. I thought, up, that's a lie now. So you need to have 1000 subscribers and 4,000 watch views. And so I haven't got there yet because of, I stopped YouTube, uh, two years ago. So I need yeah, to they've changed that. like their rules now, haven't they? Yeah, so you need to have 4,000 views in 12 months. And obviously, I only started YouTube again three months ago. So Yeah, I mean, well, you'll get there quite easily. I mean, you're getting really nice views. And, like, there's a lot of, like, relevant videos there as well. And are these just kind of things you're doing aside, you know, side by side with the influencers? You're just kind of, like, documenting it at the same time? Yeah, so I thought it would be nice if people just see some behind the scenes. Because I always get asked, can you show more behind the scenes? I thought mm -hmm. maybe I'll just have a whole video and share everyone. Yeah. Do you mainly Not dump that on YouTube? Like, do you think yeah. like behind the scenes is better on Insta or YouTube? Like, which one's better? Ooh, I think both. I think for Insta stories, people love seeing that. So I always say do behind the scenes at Insta stories and then keep it as a highlight. And then YouTube is just a different platform. So just yeah, yeah, definitely. How's your journey been on TikTok then? Because obviously you're kind of getting back into YouTube now. Um, but you just talking to me before you were saying like, you know, TikTok is going to be the biggest place for fashion like in a, in a year or so. Yeah. So I had an interview for a book that someone wants me to be a part of crazy. And she That's is a so PR. Cool. Yeah. So she's a PR for a fashion agency and she said that brands are now asking for TikTok videos from influencers and that's going to be the next big place. So yeah, I'm going to try and get more into TikTok. And my views of TikTok are crazy. Um, like, uh, I haven't got many followers and the views I'm getting are ridiculous. I think there's just a lot of like demand for like, you know, um, you know, short attention, but very quick bite sized videos. So like, are you what are you doing on your content on TikTok? Because you've got like a lot of longer videos here, but like, what do you do then on your TikTok that's different? Or do you kind of like use the same stuff, but shorter? Yeah, same stuff, but shorter. So YouTube would be like the process, me telling you the process and then the photo, whereas TikTok would be like behind the scenes, edited photo. So like, right. very, yeah. So it's like, you know, uh, behind the scenes, outcome, follow me yeah. for more, <laughs> that kind of stuff. Whereas YouTube, they love to talk, like, you, like people want to hear you talk more about, you know, what material yeah. you're using, what like camera equipment you're using. Yeah, definitely. We want like more dissection in that, haven't they? I mean, is that a little uh, remote camera you're using as well? Yeah, so I use a remote control that connects to my Canon because I only have the Canon 5D Mark III, so it's not wireless. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah, I know what you mean. Yeah, 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 definitely, yeah. It's a great camera still. Yeah, yeah, like it broke earlier this year, so I had the option of obviously upgrading, but yeah. it wasn't worth it, in my opinion. Like, I'm not saying it's a bad camera, the, the Mark IV. I'm just saying that... The only thing that was different was more about video focusing and it was Wi-Fi and I didn't think that I could justify spending that much money for those yeah, two. Yeah, just, just to upgrade for those things. So what gear are you using then overall now then? Is it, and like lens-wise, like what's your go-to lens for fashion, blogging, photography? Uh, so it's a 24 to 70. It's like so diverse. So you can do like crop shots a bit and you can do like full body shots and that's what you want for fashion. You want to like close up details and like full yeah, body. Yeah, definitely. That's, a, that's such a go-to lens as well for a lot of people. Yeah. Like just and having range. Yeah, if you can't afford that one, then there's like the 35 and that's honestly my favorite still, the 35. Yeah. So that's the one I would first started with using for like more outfit shots. Definitely. Um, yeah, so would you say that you just need like a good, for someone who's starting out with a low budget, uh, try and just not invest in a zoom lens, but just in a wide lens that's starting out and then build your way up into trying to get something that you can zoom in and out with. Yeah, so I would focus more on the lens than even the camera body. I think the lens is more important. Yeah, so. I, I do agree. Yeah, definitely. I think the lens does a lot of the magic. 
yeah, get like a really nice budget and then just invest more in the lens. Yeah. So I only just discovered that my family had my old camera, my first ever camera that was a Nikon. And honestly, the quality was still good on that. I tried to shoot a bit the other day. Yeah, I mean, you can. If you just get like the right camera and then, especially for shooting on like social media, like you don't really need high resolutions and frame rates. You just need like a good quality HD camera and then the rest of it, you just can't even tell the difference. Like, would you... How do you think about that? Like, you know, you're taking a lot of efforts taking pictures and then it just gets downscaled onto Instagram. Oh, don't tell me about it. I know sometimes it, it can be a killer. Sometimes I even get asked to shoot with a phone. So really? I'm kind of, yeah, I get paid sometimes to shoot on a phone. Even a How, brand's paid. Why, yeah. do, why do they ask you to do that instead of a camera? I think because there's like this theory that if you shoot on phone, um, Instagram picks up the data and Instagram prefers iPhone shots rather than yeah. shots. So, but I, I really? don't know. Is that yeah. just like a conspiracy theory? Yeah, I think it's like a theory. So some prefer phone shots, some prefer camera shots. I, I honestly couldn't tell you, so I had to shoot both. Do you think <laughs> we still have a place in like Insta Instagram fashion photography considering like more and more people are now doing like iPhone, you know, um, the new iPhone photography is like pretty unreal for what it can do obviously nowhere near like the dynamic range you can capture on a camera but like you know a lot of people are investing in like buying phones over cameras like what do you think like how's the industry going to move forward i think phones going to be a big part of our lives in photography like as i said at the moment i'm doing facetime photo shoots and that's all just by using a phone so <laughs> yeah i would don't want obviously uh phones to be cameras because of i love my camera but yeah I, so. I, I, I can see phones becoming more a part of the of the job really i think for a lot of people it's also like the turnover time like you get something on a phone you can edit it quickly and you can post it immediately yeah and but i think there's always going to be a place for like photographers just because like for the big shoots like big prints like this is like definitely magazine worthy stuff do you know what i mean yeah, so I, cameras will obviously be there for magazines, TVs, like commercials. So, you know. 100%. And do you, just by looking at your editing style, do you like make your own presets and things like that? Uh, you know, I haven't got my own preset. I just edit basically the same, which I know just sounds stupid. I just should make a preset by now. Because <laughs> <laughs> like, whenever I try to edit something differently, it just looks the same. So, yeah. Definitely. I mean, it looks awesome though. Like, still, so I think capturing, like, you do a lot of, like, nature and, like, a lot of, like, different traveling, like, locations. So there's so much variety in there. You'd need, yeah. like, a lot of different presets as well, wouldn't you? Yeah. So it'll be, like, my travel one, my London one. So these are the stuff I need to do, really. <laughs> yeah, 100%. I mean, the photography lifestyle looks awesome, by the way, for, like, traveling. I mean, getting a lot of perks with it. Oh, yeah, yeah. To be honest, when you do travel photography, it is more intense because of you're only there for a short amount of time and the brands want a lot of content from you. So you so, do work a lot harder. So do you get a lot of time to wind down or is it just shoot, shoot, shoot and then <laughs> tour later? No time to wind down. Normally shoot and then edit. <laughs> and, and then, then you just, that's it. Time. Yeah. Is it editing there on the job or do you kind of wait when you get back home? Editing on the job. If it's influences, it has to be, it'll have to post. Sometimes oh, I see. Yeah, that makes more sense. Yeah. So sometimes having to edit at least 10 images for, I guess, eight girls or eight influencers. That's crazy. Well, you're doing a really good job of like expanding your reach out onto like different platforms. And I think now is the best time to just jump on all those different things. And you're doing TikTok as well and YouTube and just kind of getting your own brand image in there as well. Do you think that's really important? Like as photographers, we're usually behind the camera, but should we also make more of an effort in front of the camera? Yeah, I get like sometimes more likes when I'm in front of the camera on my post for um, Instagram. I think people will want to connect with you as well. People are nosy, so they want to know more about you. So <laughs> Yeah, definitely. They want to see the person behind the lens and who's doing the magic. Yeah, literally. So I would say try and show more of yourself and obviously venture out on more of the platforms. We have loads of time now. So try yeah. And yeah, like you say, you never know. Like we might all be on TikTok by next year, just like making yeah, stuff. You on there doing like dance moves of photography. Yeah, <laughs> that is actually crazy, you know. Um, so that's a lot of helpful advice for a lot of people. Um, and like your journey's just been like crazy. Like in t you know, in terms of like find the clients, university, 
self-taught and now you're doing it pretty much full-time and you've got like the luxury of traveling as well but obviously like we're in a pretty shitty situation right now like how are you currently dealing with that yeah so I obviously do miss photography and I'm doing loads more self-portraits at the moment to try and keep myself active by editing and really social platforms have been helping me a bit because it means I can be more creative than have that outlet otherwise I'm just sitting there watching come dine on me every day <laughs> I mean, it's definitely getting some people through it, but do you feel like you, you, it's kind of like limiting your creativity now? Or is that why you've started the TikTok stuff and the YouTube stuff? Because you're doing a lot of self portraits now as well. Like, so your creative juice is still flowing. Yeah, I still have some left in me, although I have basically photographed every single corner of my room now and in my house. So <laughs> I'm like, what else can I do if there's limited space? I know it is, it is a challenge, isn't it? Like there's only so much you can do before like you start hitting a wall. Um, have you kind of ventured on your daily walks? Like, have you thought about ways you can take pictures or is it just proven quite difficult or? Well, my daily walks, uh, I don't know. My daily walks is a time for me to wind down. So I never really think about things like photography when I'm on my walks. Although I just see one spot and was like, I could take a self portrait here, but obviously I'm not allowed just yet. Mm -hmm. So <laughs> yesterday, obviously like for UK, like Boris announced that we are easing restrictions for lockdowns, but there wasn't much clarity. So what are you doing in terms of like what's been announced and do you think photographers should stay in or should they go out? Like what, what do you think? Personally, I'm staying in because of <laughs> after hearing that we're the, like the worst in Europe, but it doesn't make me feel confident to go out and take photos, in all honesty. I know some people really do, like they want money because obviously we're, we're not earning anything at the moment, but I think health should be put first in this situation. So it is a hard one. I actually asked this on my Insta stories as well, and the majority of people did say they're going to stay home, and that made me feel more happy of my opinion because if I didn't want to be the only one that's gonna be like right I'm gonna stay in what would you say to people who are like in a really tough decision is their only source of income yeah I would say health should always come first and hopefully Boris makes it a bit more clearer because of like his speech yesterday is quite freelancing is so broad mm -hmm. so I don't think he made it very clear like who should really be out and then yeah we do need a lot of clarification on that how have your um clients been like you know in terms of are they itching to get you back out and have uh you know how are you how are you feeling in terms of like letting them down gently and things like that do you know this is a really hard one because of even before boris's speech yesterday i was getting people messaging me being like can we shoot in my house and people i've never met before being like what are your rates on a shoot this week i'm in london i'm kind of like do you not know that we're, we're not meant to be out i don't think a shot like an instagram shot is worth it right now although i love it i don't think it's worth it yeah i definitely understand where you're coming from um andrew says in the comments um they've just published a document outlining some information and photography is not one of the work sectors that has been told to resume so the only thing we can see right now is food production construction manufacturing things like that basically that require like scientific research so i'm guessing we are as photographers pretty much on lockdown still yeah, so Andrew, I'm going to use that and I'm going to put that on my story just so people know then. Yeah, I, I think it's just literally been... I remember them saying they were going to publish something today, but yeah, they, they did a pretty terrible job of like just waffling yesterday and not making it clear, so... I was yeah. so confused. I was like, am I meant to go out? I'm, I'm really unsure. I was like, go out, but stay in, but stay alert, but go out. And I was like, okay, <laughs> not much going on there, isn't there? Like what? What? Like it's an invisible virus. What am I meant to stay alert with? No. How are you gonna? Let's say. Let's give you a hypothetical situation now. Then, so um, you know, let's say in a few weeks' time, June first, you can go back out now. How are you gonna take measures in doing all your photography going forward? Oh yeah, I, I think this is gonna be a really hard one because of doing two to three shoots a day and that on different locations it would involve a lot of public transport. So I'm really going to have to think about this. I've even asked my dad, like, would you be up for driving me to some locations and I pay you? But obviously he's got his own job to do. Jobs to do, yeah. So... And that's the sticky situation because I'm the same. I shoot in urban locations and, uh, and street locations. So I don't want to put myself in the mess where I'm in an Uber with someone I don't know or on a public transport, which they keep telling me to avoid. Like, 
I still haven't found a solution, but the only thing I can think of is like again, like either family member driving me to the location, but then that really limits your scheduling time, doesn't it? Like how many times you can shoot in a week or a day on. It really does. And you're not going to jump on a bike with all your camera equipment and ride around. Yeah, especially if you live like half an hour away, you know, or like, you know, miles away. It's going to be a bit of a miss, isn't it? Yeah. So I don't know. I, I, hopefully it'll be OK. I'm just trying. I just you can't really tell right now. Are you thinking of wearing any protective gear or things like that? Or are you just kind of just social distancing? Oh, yeah. So when I go to the supermarkets, I'm always wearing my gloves. My family try to make me wear masks and everything. So, like, I'm fully kitted out, really. <laughs> yeah, I think definitely, yeah. Going forward, it'll probably, like, I think even me, and when I go back out, I've got, like, face masks downstairs, gloves and everything. I'll probably be just really, like, on edge using them when I'm on photo shoots. Yeah, because then I also think as I do fashion, um, is my influencer clients going to have to take off their masks to get that shot? So I'm really thinking about these things, like how's it going to affect taking photos? For- yeah. Do you think we're going to take a hit coming out of this? Like, are we going to be able to have the same generosity of like negotiating rates? Or like, are we going to really have like smaller budgets going forward? Like, what do you think? Oh, this is a tough one. I feel like my client scale will be a bit smaller because people will be scared to still go out at the start. They'll prefer the home content that they've been creating. So well, it's really hard to decide what's going to happen. Yeah, definitely. I would just guess we just don't really know. Like, when do you think we'll be back out again shooting as photographers? If you, or where would you, when would you like to be back out again? Oh, I would like to be out by next week, but let's be honest, it's not going to happen. So I'm thinking maybe September, like maybe. I know that I'm not going to be able to do Fashion Week this year. So, um, yeah. Yeah, that's probably going to be a sticky one, isn't it? Yeah. So I don't think, I, I think maybe at the end of the year and it's winter that we'll get to go out and shoot again. Have you like, have you had to like postpone all your dates pretty much and just tell your clients, listen, um, this is going to be done on a later schedule and they're okay with that? Yeah, I thought they know, they can't really argue against a pandemic really, can they? <laughs> like, it's pretty difficult to, yeah. I had like obviously trips cancelled, so it does suck, but I know I'm grateful to being safe and healthy right now. Mm-hmm. And you're just kind of, are you just enjoying doing your own content at the moment and just finding new platforms yeah so I'm like with YouTube I keep, I keep on having like a love-hate relationship with it I keep on going like yeah I'm gonna make content and as soon as I post it I'm like how has no one seen it yet <laughs> <laughs> I think so many people are tuning in now especially on streaming so there's just so much to like you know go through to find stuff but I, I think right now we'll definitely get a lot more traction than we will later on when everything yeah. gets back to normality yeah and with YouTube it was also a slow burner so I know that you had to put more effort in and constantly mm-hmm every week so. it does yeah it, it always will be a slow burner but definitely i think you're on the right track and you know people are tuning in for the podcast um andrew says it's on page 25 by the way so i'll definitely have a read of that and see what's going on but yeah. thank you so much for coming on sh- uh, on the show michaela is there anything you want to finish off on for aspiring photographers who want to be just like you and what advice would you give them right now i always tell people to be confident even if you don't feel it always be confident in what you do like even if you don't even know the right settings on your camera, just pretend like you do and just go for it because that's how it got me through my first jobs. <laughs> I think that's such a good advice. Like I think confidence, like people can see it and they invest in it a lot. So, and yeah. you're just learning in the deep end, deep end is a really good way as well. It's scary, but it definitely gets you to places faster, I get. Yeah, I don't remember I told you that I did a shoot with a really big client and I forgot to change my settings. I like, so most of my images came out really grainy. Oh, really? And, yeah, terrible. It was like when I, was when I first really started out. And so I gave them the edited images and they kept on asking me, oh, how come they're quite grainy? And I was like, oh, it's my editing style. It's and just I, really like, grunge and vintage. <laughs> yeah, and so they left it as that. They thought, okay, that's her style. Not, I didn't want to say, oh, yeah, I messed up or anything. I was just confident that that was my style and I'm going to go for it. <laughs> yeah, well, I, you stuck to your boots and uh, your hair now, so it worked out. Yeah, definitely. so be confident even if you mess up. <laughs> yeah, definitely. <laughs> so gonna... thank you so much for, again, coming on the show. I think there's a lot of uh, great tips and all your details are in the description. Like, um, check out uh, Michaela's YouTube channel website 
Instagram. There's just so much on there to explore, and I'm excited to see what you're gonna do next. And you know, definitely get back on the podcast. Maybe like in six months' time, see what the place is like, especially Ooh, you know in in London as well. Like you know, um, for people like uh, are your friends in the same boat mm-hmm. as you mentally as well? Like you know, your photographer friends. Yeah, so we're all. We're, I think as a photographer, you're in a community of other photographers. So I think we can all relate that you know this situation does kind of suck for us. But if we're all in it together, then we can come out of it quicker. So that's all we can do. Well, thank you so much for coming on again. Thanks for everyone tuning in, and I'll catch you guys on the next one. Bye. Boy.